Lip Milton walk in the back street crying. Mom. Hello and welcome to another edition of Here We Are. I'm your host, Tanita Cheatham. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, there was a time not long ago uh, when it was customary for a father who owned a business to pass the mantle of ownership of that business to his male heir when he retired. If it wasn't his son, then it could have been a nephew or, or male cousin or even a brother. Bottom line, ownership was always handed over to another male. Well, today that bottom line, like most trends, is changing. There are more and more family-owned businesses, not only inherited by daughters, but there are many more businesses owned by women, period. Now, in this segment, we're going to talk with one of Chicago's successful and well-known father-daughter business tag teams, Purvis Spann and his daughter, Melody Spann Cooper. Now, the Spans are the owner of the WVON radio station, Call Letters 1450 AM, a station better known as the Talk of Chicago. The Spans have successfully brought informative as well as entertaining programming to Chicago's radio audience for many years. In this segment, they will talk to us about the strategies that have made them successful and what their listening audience may be in store for in the future. Just for the benefit of, of those who don't know, a bit of history on WVON, how it started. Well, who you want to do we'll it? Ask <laughs> we'll ask the grid. We'll ask the grid. How far back do you want to go? Well, well, let's start with this. What made you think of starting a radio station? Was it by accident or something you strategically set out to do? Well, no. Uh, I started in the radio a long time ago. You were already in. When you were very happy to be able to get a job on a radio station. Mm -hmm. I got into, into radio by... Uh, we. I went to look for a job when I got out of broadcasting school. I uh, went on Friday, and the man told me, he says, there are no jobs in the radio. Uh, Sir, I understand. Uh, how about, uh, will you have anything open soon? He says, uh, no, well, come, come see me about a month. So the next day, which was Saturday, I was back at his office. He said, I told you yesterday I didn't have a job uh, available. I said, yes, sir, but that's, that was yesterday. You know, <laughs> things do change. And came so, with their 24-hour period. <laughs> yeah, so, so we, we talk, and he says, well, you know, didn't too much change yet, so, but you stay in touch. I said, thank you, sir. So I was back Monday, three days in a row. He said, man, listen. <laughs> What can you do? I said, I'm a radio announcer. I'm in broadcasting school. It's time for me to get out of school. I'm looking for a job. He said, well, uh, can you handle a 15-minute program? I said, I can handle any kind of program you give me. You know, whatever it is, I can do it. So he told me, well, then you come see me like this Friday. I'll see if I can set you up with uh, something. So when he came to the office Friday morning, I was there. And he looked at me as if to say, what am I going to do to get rid of you? Mm -hmm. So he gave me a 15-minute program from 12, 15 at night to 12, 30 at night. What station was that then? That was on radio station WOPA, the program then called the McKee All Night Roundup. Mm -hmm. So McKee was broadcasting from certain lounges, and uh, like you'd hear a lounge on the west side, uh, Roses, uh, for 15 minutes, and in the next 15 minutes you'll hear Kirkland, Kirkland or somebody else. So I went out and got me a sponsor like right then, because as by being a Leo, and a very aggressive type individual, I went out and got me a sponsor before Friday. So you were a host and you were an advertising person? You yes. were own host and own advertising well, person? Well, I bought the time. Then I sold the time 
to Kirk's, Kirk's, Kirkley Lounge and two to the other folks. Mm -hmm. So I'm making myself uh, $75 off the program already because I got some, uh, some clients. Mm -hmm. So when do we get to the VON part? Oh, that's way down the line, baby. You got a long time ago. Okay, well, I want you to kind of start like <laughs> April 1st, 1963. You, you, want to, you want to skip over to all yeah, the rest I want, of it? Yeah, but that she was a good start. Go to April 1st, 1963. I want to know the April 1st, 1963. Okay. <laughs> April 1st, 1963. But that's when you started thinking, like, I want to own my own radio station. No, go to April 1st, 1963. Go to April 1st, 1963. <laughs> I'm going to like this interview. <laughs> okay. April 1st, 1963, VON was put on the air by Leonard and Phil Chess, L and P Broadcasting Corporation, and they had called me uh, during that time that I was on uh, WOPA to come over. They want me to do the all night midnight show, so I came over and I was the first person on the air at WVON, and uh, more or less just remained there ever since. I'm a workaholic. I love the work, so That's folks good. will. Well, automatically look for a workaholic if you're looking for somebody to do some work. Okay, well, that's good for the soul. That's good for the soul. Oh, okay. Now, was, uh, I kind of talked about it in the opening where uh, there was a time when fathers passed off uh, business mantle leadership to uh, a male heir in the family, but it's kind of changing. And I know you probably get this um, asked a lot. And outside of saying, oh, it's really great, when people talk to you about um, what is it like and, 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 and how does it feel to... Um, have inherited something like that. What do you What do you say? Oh, it's a, it's a great thing. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. I mean, it. You know, we we've had our ups and downs. Purvis, being uh, uh, from the South, Daddy is very. Um, he he believes that women, uh, you know, usually are at home. That's why he, he always asks, you know, when are you gonna have some children. And really? Like married, well, Does we, he ask we, that question? Are you Are you gonna answer that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, I think I have an older brother. And I think that he would, of course, as most men would, mm -hmm. would have preferred his son to follow in his footsteps more than his daughter. But he's always been supportive of all of his children. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I probably, well, I know I have worked closer with him than, than, the other, than the other children. But I think it's so natural for a man to want to, to pass his, uh, his company on. I think another reason is because of lineage. Um, oftentimes women get married, and if they are in business, then the business then goes into another part of the family. It, it's, not, it's not that yeah, span yeah. lineage. Mm -hmm. I think that was a concern for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I've been a, a part of VON since I was 14 years old. And because Purvis was... 13 and a half. Because, <laughs> because he, <laughs> he, he, he was a part owner of it, it was really my playground. Mm. Uh, and I showed interest in it in a way that my brother never did. That's interesting. Yeah, That's I, and I think that you, you have to allow your children to, to find their niche. I think some children are leaders, some of them are islands, and some of them are, are followers. And I, I think uh, I am a Leo, too, so I've always kind of been that, mm -hmm. that leader type, you know, person. But I think at first he probably did not want Didn't me be. to... At first, Be maybe you didn't. No, I didn't say that. Oh, well, now I'm asking. I think, I think what y'all are doing. <laughs> I'm uh, not trying to box you I in the corner. I think you're <laughs> assuming. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I've always been a family man. Uh, and I don't, don't love my son no more than I love my daughters. Okay? I have enough love to spread around among my children. All I want them to do is follow uh, leads, follow guidelines. If we set guidelines up, let's follow those guidelines. Let's do what we have to do. And let's do the right thing, the proper thing. And uh, I think my daughter Melody has inherited uh, uh, WVON to the point that I'm uh, extremely proud of her. Mm. She is what you call ideal person that you would want to take over when you uh, are not able to continue. Uh, but always, I feel great when she come to me and says, what shall I do? Mm -hmm. And, that, that, and makes, that still happens. Yeah. That yeah. still yeah. happens. Yeah. It happens great. even more now because I think that, you know, both of us kind of fell in our way, you know, can she handle this? And me, you know, trying to show him that I can handle this. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe early on when I first taken over, you know, we had 
you know, a few differences, but no they're more than normal. The I mean, different styles, the different styles. styles of management, mm -hmm. and you know, could he get to the level where he would respect mine, or you know, and could I get to a level where I, I wouldn't say, you know, well, Dad's old fashioned. Uh, we we have finally reached a point now where there are times, and and I'll tell him when he comes in, Dad, I wanna spend, I want you to spend some time with me, and I'll go over things with him, and it, I mean, it's it's really developed into a, a wonderful wonderful relationship. Now isn't that interesting? Here's a man you grew up in the household with, knew him all your life, mm -hmm. and it, it just really speaks to being in a different context with people. Mm -hmm. Before it was the father-daughter context, mm -hmm. now it's the businessman, businesswoman type context. Mm -hmm. It's like reinventing another relationship and mm -hmm. you had to take time to learn to That's pull that right. together and to gel that. And even though your styles were different, you know, you're still able to come together on, um, on uh, certain things. Now, mm -hmm. What I'm getting from what you're saying, Melody, is that radio was something that was kind of like in your blood, something that you kind of like... I don't know if it was really in my blood, Tanita. I think that uh, I really wanted to go into television. Okay. And I'll never... Same thing. Well... Same thing. Okay. Well, anyway, when I, <laughs> when I was in school, Dad wanted me to go to school, I think, to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. He wanted me to be a lawyer, and I, I didn't want to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. And we used to really have it out about that. You know, you don't need to do that. And... Um, and I, I, I would try to go into different business. You know, I wanted to go into television. I'd send tapes out. I did all. I would do all of that. But I'd been working at VON since I was 14 years old. I've never really worked any place else. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother would always tell me that, you know, God kept you there for a reason. You know, to be able to get to this point, what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. But of course, when you're 22, 23, you don't understand that. Mm -hmm. You, you know, this is what I, I really want to do. But I think that they both wanted me to, you know, to mm -hmm. kind of stay there and mm -hmm. to uh, and to kind of do what I'm doing mm -hmm. um, and he always felt like you know well VON will always be here you can come in here and learn this uh, I think he kind of wanted other things for me but you know it it, it worked out just the way it, it was supposed to mm -hmm. let's talk about for a minute the vision of, of WVON I know that when you took over the reins of leadership at WVON you had a vision for how you envisioned this radio station to be has WVON lived up to that vision? And with the addition of, of Melanie, is it still progressively, if it's not there yet, is it getting to that point and with Melanie on board, is it still moving in that direction? We have to look at that in a total context of what's going on in the world of communication. Uh, what I would vision for WVON cannot happen right now because of the political climate. Mm -hmm. You know, let us be f just practical. Out of all the radio stations in the city of Chicago proper, WVON is the only one owned by black people. All the rest of them program to black people, but they're not owned by black people. And there is always a wall waiting on you at the FCC if you come in and try to expand one way or another. There's a battle waiting for you. The big political giants are, are waiting there to try to blow you out of the water if you try to land something else, okay? So it is not an easy job of uh, getting radio stations. It's matter of fact, it's almost utterly impossible unless you find you a financial bonanza someplace going to come by and drop some because they want 30 million dollars for anything to cover the city almost okay mm -hmm. 30 million now you got to start thinking I came from Mississippi to Cottonfield to Chicago where am I going to get 30 million dollars for and just now they have just began to loan black people money from banks. A lot of folks don't really understand the plight of black people as far as business is concerned. Mm -hmm. Up until a few years ago, black folks couldn't go into no banks and get no money. And it's, 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 been, it's been kept from black people by prejudice, prejudice uh, commitments from the government all along. That's why black folks don't own no more businesses than they do. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of good black businessmen as far as they can go mm -hmm. until they go into the bank to get some money to 
expand. Well, you know, that kind of uh, leads me to another question. What has contributed to, the, based on the fact that you are the only black-owned radio station um, and have a, a large listening audience, what has contributed to the longevity of WVON? Well, now I got a problem. I got a good operator. <laughs> and Melody, my daughter, she, she, she gives me time to breathe. I, I can go out. Uh, I've been trying to grow in other arenas of this uh, broadcasting field. I, I went to Memphis, Tennessee, and I, I discovered uh, one the license for it, and construct a 50,000-watt radio station, first 50,000-watt radio station uh, in the country built by a black individual. I built it to, uh, then I went on to several other cities. I think I, last I checked, it was seven licenses I had some part of. Mm -hmm. and, but but that's, that's, that, that's grew, that grew from the point that black folks didn't really own no radio station. And I felt that now I know how to get a license, let me get all I can. Then we moved into Atlanta, Georgia, and we got a 10,000-watt radio station. I'm an electronic engineer by trade, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, I'm a daddy. I try to be a good daddy. I'm a well, family man. Well, now he asked that question. <laughs> yes, I'm a family man. I am an electronic engineer. Uh, so... I guess some of my close friends calls me some other things too. But I See, you, know, you know what? You got to take this to a place where we don't even need to go. go. <laughs> what else? Tell me, Melanie. What else attributes to the longevity of WVON? I think, um, Tanita, it is um, uh, a commitment to not selling. We've had uh, more than six offers in the last five years. This is a seller's market in this radio industry. Some I didn't tell you about. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> you know, that many I know of mm -hmm. who have come in and wanted to buy a station for astronomical prices. Prices that we all can run off in the sunset and, and live happily ever after. Won't have any more financial worries if we are smart. But you make a commitment that we will, we want to keep this in black hands. And, um, and we're just committed to, to, to staying and, and growing the station. If you look at just in the last several years, other, uh, family-owned conglomerates in the city of Chicago hair care industry. Mm -hmm. We've lost some major giants. Mm -hmm. If you look at some of the advertising agencies black-owned, they've merged. So it is a, it is a merging type in the, uh, atmosphere that we're living in mm -hmm. to grow your company. Um, so VON, we are going to grow. But we have really no plans, so By we want to keep rules. it here. By mm -hmm. your own rules. Right. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Lord, I pray to you bring peace to my children's soul. Lord, the burden is so. Lord, incline thine ear, God unto me, and plead alone hear my. And we're back. This is here we are, and I'm Tanita Cheatham, and. Today we're talking to a very famous, uh, well-known uh, business tag team, father and daughter uh, relationship, and that's uh, Purvis Spann and his daughter, Melody Cooper Spann. And we're talking about the history of WBON and, and working together. You know, all the good stuff gets talked about when the commercial <laughs> going. I want to talk about some of what we talked about while the commercial was going on, Purvis getting off fidgety. But, you know, we were talking about the great stuff about being a family-owned business, but there's some challenges that are, are, are just inherent within that, and uh, one of them is uh, just being able to work together. It's, it's one thing to work for a boss and someone you don't know, but it's another thing when you're working for your father. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he, it's hard sometimes to separate the business hat from the uh, personal hat, and what are the challenges that you've uh, had to deal with with mm. regards to that relationship? What? You about when to say it, all rosy, aren't you? When it, no, okay. no, no. When it comes to a job, if I give you a job as general manager and give you a job, uh, we, we make you president general manager, uh, all I need to do then is whenever you need to know the duties of a general manager, uh, president, 
ask me and I'll give those to you. But my daughter makes good decisions. She makes <laughs> great decisions. You have to say decisions. that first. Right. <laughs> because if you, if you make good decisions, there's no point in me writing you uh, uh, or arguing with you about it because at some point, the burden of proof will fall back on you in the, in the first place. Mm -hmm. So you make good good decisions. She's a lovable person. She make good decisions, and she does a good job. Um, and somewhere down the line, if I live long enough, uh, I'll I'll uh, compensate her for uh, being a person of of integrity, and I'll. I'll I prove. You haven't compensated this child yet? Not yet. Okay, I'm going to give you really? a chance to, to, to defend that, uh, <laughs> Melanie. You, 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 you go on, girl. There's some of the challenges that you, you do. Uh, well, nothing. I don't, you know, when you're working for your family, it's like being in a, in a marriage. Um, and that's why you find so many uh, people who, who grew up in, in family-owned business in Chicago, they'll go off and start their own because you do get to a point where, you know, you want to do your own thing. You want to bring in your own style. And, and if, if a, a person like Purvis with such a strong personality or the person who started the business is still involved in the business, it is hard to let go. Mm -hmm. You know, it is hard to say, okay, you take it and do what you want to do with it. So you come in with a lot of energy and you, you're doing what you want to do with it. And he said, hey, but you don't do it that way. Do it this way. I'm like, well, hey, I'm the general manager. Let me do. And then that's when it mm -hmm. goes kind of back and forth. Mm -hmm. We've kind of found our balance with that. But it, it took us a while. I mean, I've quit. He's fired me. You know, we, <laughs> we've been through it all. We've been oh, all of that. Yeah. When, when you quit, you... How do you fire your daughter? I don't know. When so, you, I'll tell when you, you, when you, you fire people, you when, fire. You, <laughs> when, when you fire people, you, you pay them and let them go, don't they? Did she get a good comp Did you get a good compensation pack? Uh, 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 he she said got that it. was coming down the road. Didn't she, uh, <laughs> but but, but, but he hired you back before he. Could no, no. She got an attitude like most women <laughs> do and walked off, and I didn't replace her with nobody. I didn't even uh. put nobody to do one duty because I knew she'd be back. <laughs> There's no problem, no problem. Uh, and then you got you got to keep this in mind. How many women that you know running a radio station in Chicago, black or white, and there's only one black radio station here, that puts immense power in her hand. Mm -hmm. Nobody walks off and leaves that kind of power. <laughs> So I just, Whoa! I didn't even, Whoa! I didn't do nothing. I didn't. Oh, oh, mess. Mess. Okay. You were mess. Let's talk about this for a second. Um, how do you feel about being labeled a black radio station? Do you feel that like puts you in the box or do you Good. feel it's a great advantage? Good. Yeah, I got to look at it, look at it this way. I'm a black man and I'm black and I'm proud. Matter of fact, I don't know no other color. But black, because I have never been to other color. Mm -hmm. So I just take what I got. I'm black. I do the best I can with it. Whenever the things pops up that I have to fight, as far as prejudice and stuff like that, I find a way to fight it and keep on stepping. I will tell my daughters, I'll tell all the young folks that ever listen to me, the doors of opportunity is not always open. I usually turn it around and say the doors of opportunity is always closed. You want to get in there, kick the damn door down. Get in there. Do what you have to do. Whatever you have to do to get in there, you do it. But make it work. Now, that's my motto. The door is closed, kick it down. Because you're going to want to get on the other side some kind yes. of way. Yes. You know, WBON has been, it, it's it, traditionally, a radio station that has has uh, developed and, and, and turned off and sent off into the world wonderful talent many wonderful talent mm -hmm. uh, I can think of I mean well would you have that you know Cliff Kelly mm -hmm. Monique Carradine Demary Cobb uh, Perry Small just I could think of a lot of names but those are the ones that come off the top Don Canese a lot of Don Canese <laughs> a lot of them a lot of them, a lot mm -hmm. of them. Tom, Tom Joyner. Joyner you know and so what what do you think attributes to that 
and then I guess this is kind of twofold. And then when you are, and I know you're looking currently, you 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 are in the process of looking for a new producer because one of your great producers will be leaving you soon. Mm -hmm. uh, Toya Baker, who's wonderful, mm -hmm. I had a wonderful uh, time working with her. What are you looking for when you when you bring it in talent? You you want me to answer that? Yeah, because I'm you? looking for someone who. Uh, is willing not to come there for selfish reasons someone who's willing to become part of a team mm -hmm. we call it the VON family and it is really the, that most of the people that have, been, have uh, come there and have worked for instance the young lady who's leaving now she's been there eight years she loved college she's been there since she graduated from college um, our people come and and they really are family mm -hmm. it, it's not a place where you come in there and you're like oh my god I gotta go to work sometimes we have to tell them you need to go home Get you some rest. Mm -hmm. Spend time with your family. Mm -hmm. So so we look for real team players. Mm -hmm. And for people who can come in and say, you know, I believe in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not just going there to get a check. I believe in what they're doing. This is a mission. This is we're on a mission. Yeah, this Absolutely. Is a mission. This and I look for that when I'm interviewing. Mm -hmm. And if I if I know it's someone who's just coming there to put it on their resume and they want to go off in the next one or two years, then that's not the type of person that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that we, we really look to hire. Mm -hmm. It's okay to grow and to go on. We, we're we happy to see Toya take this position that she's taken. And let me say this, too, that mm -hmm. when they leave VON, mm -hmm. go on to wonderful stuff. Absolutely. Because everyone we just mentioned, I mean, just within their own arena, mm -hmm. very well known. Mm -hmm. Very well known. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's a great place. I mean, it's a legendary station. It's more than just... A radio station, it really is. It, it is an institution in Chicago. Mm. And uh, we are so fortunate to have it. And those who, uh, who come there are very fortunate to, to be part of, of, of such a legacy. Mm. It really is an awesome, mm. awesome institution. Mm. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, when you said that you sometimes you go to your dad mm -hmm. for advice, mm -hmm. uh, to ask him mm -hmm. you know, for input mm -hmm. in uh, certain mm -hmm. decisions mm -hmm. that you um, make how does that how does that work is it a thing if she asks you something and you just say well this is what you need to do or do you help her to think through well what you're trying to do what she's trying to accomplish it all depends if she asks me something about the equipment i'm an electronic engineer so mm -hmm. i can just about tell her what needs to happen then she knows who to call to take care of that particular if she's asking me something about well she knows uh, basically everything it is to know about the paperwork and operating the, the radio station and the, uh, most times I think I go to him now though to ask him how to handle certain situations I tend to uh, I, I'm not an emotional person but uh, I, I, I really like to be fair mm -hmm. and if mm -hmm. you know I get real close to things and really involved and, and there's a level of objectivity that I must keep and so if I think I'm, over, I'm going to overreact, or if I think that I need to maybe apply a little more pressure, you know, I bounce it off him and say, you know, well, how, how, how should I handle this? Mm -hmm. You know, and those are the type of things I think that I probably go to him most with at this juncture. Mm -hmm. But really, this is a good time for him. He's, he, I think I've gotten to the point where I'm pretty confident in what I'm doing. So it's not really a lot to discuss in terms of, of business. The business is, is working. I mean, you know, we're making money. It's a good, healthy, black-owned business. Um, and that frees him up to do some things that he may want to do. You know, he wants to write a book. Purvis is always doing something. Oh, um, whatever. I, I'm a workaholic. He's, yeah. Workaholic. And you don't want him to be idle too long, because then that means it's going to be, you know, maybe he's going to go get a tiger and train it. You just, you just never know with him. You know, he's going to run for president next. I mean, who knows? Don't worry about the right, tiger, right. okay? You might. But you have to. I mean, he, he really is. Um, people often, um, I, I think because my dad, came up in an era, you know, he was the blues man. Mm -hmm. and, and I think people have categorized him to be a certain way. They don't mm -hmm. expect him to dream the dreams that he dreams. Uh, they don't expect him to, to have accomplished the things that he have accomplished. But, and they always say, oh, you know, you, you, your dad, and oh, it's wonderful how he's educated you and, and how well you're doing. Um, but the, but I've, I've never been, I, I will never probably be as aggressive as my dad or as smart as my dad just really. be good at what you do just yeah be good I, at I may be able to rhyme my verbs uh, you know I may speak grammatically better than mm -hmm. him but in terms of things that going after things and uh, really having a business acumen up here you, you can't beat him you still kind of you just in that. you know we are 
pretty much out of time. And I know you had your finger up, you had to say something. So you know what that means. You're going to have to come back. You're going to have to come back another day. We you're gonna will. Have to come back another day. But I want to thank you both for coming to the program. Thanks I really for enjoyed us. having you on there. Purpose just said, like, oh, I can't believe this. Yeah. Yeah. He had something else to tell you. you. <laughs> we going to talk about that. You want to tell it? You know, my guys in the studio just said, let them tell it. What you got to say? Oh, oh, I was just going to tell you that uh, they're going to celebrate my 40th year. 40th? 40th year of oh, being oh. the blues man in the city of Chicago. All right. With, 40 years. With B.B. King and... Coco Taylor and Bobby Bland and Purvis Fan and some <laughs> more. Are you going to be singing? B.B. King going to do the same. show up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. For it's my pleasure. It's Thank you so pleasure. much. Thank you for inviting us. Right there. If you want light. We got enough light. That ain't enough light.